Okay. I think the, the flow of people joining the meeting has slowed down a bit, so we'll get started for today's webinar. Um, welcome everybody and thank you very much for coming along to today's webinar where we're going to be talking about the Modern Slavery PEC's latest call on prevention of modern slavery and in particular we're going to be looking at two elements of this funding call that are on homelessness and poverty and cost of living. My name is Izzy, I'm the Modern Slavery PEC's Research Operations Manager and you'll be hearing from myself and my colleague Alex throughout today's presentation. I'm just going to kick off with um, a bit of housekeeping. So all participants are on mute with video off and we ask that if you have any questions to ask us today, you use the Q&A function within Teams. Um, so you should be able to find this in the top bar on Teams. There should be something that says Q&A and you can post your questions into there and we will pick those up. Feel free to drop them in at any point during today's presentation and then we'll pick them up in the Q&A at the end. Also, feel free to drop any technical problems. So if you can't hear us, for example, post those in the Q&A as well, and we'll do our best to try and fix those. Um, if we're unable to fix them, then we will be recording today's webinar and we'll share it online afterwards on the call's web page. We're going to record all of today's webinar, um, including the Q&A, but when we share it online later, we won't be sort of sharing that Q&A. So feel free to ask um, questions freely. What we'll be doing instead is writing up an FAQ document of all of the questions asked in today's webinar and also any questions that we've received over email. And we'll sort of keep updating that while the call's live and that will be housed on the call's web page. So you can access that um, after the webinar today. At the Modern Slavery PEC, um, we have a set of meeting rules that we use in all of our meetings. I'm just gonna post a link to these in the Q&A now. Um, so these meeting rules we ask, and that's, so that should be pinned to the top. So we ask that all attendees um, abide by these meeting rules, are sensitive and respectful, and they're really about trying to create um, a safe space where a variety of people can engage with the modern slavery PEX work, including those with lived experience of modern slavery. We ask that you observe these meeting rules, um, in particular when posting questions in the Q&A, and any questions that don't abide by those meeting rules, we won't publish within the Q&A, so please just be mindful um, when you are asking questions, but hopefully we won't have any issues with these today. On to the agenda for today, we're going to be starting off with an introduction to the modern slavery PEC. Then we'll be going through an overview of the research projects that we're funding and then we'll be finishing up by going through the application process and then we'll move on to the Q&A section. Um, I can see a raised hand if you'd be able to put any questions in the Q&A just for the presentation part or save them for um, later then we can pick them up at the end of today's call if that's all right. So I'm going to hand over now to Alex to give an introduction to Modern Slavery PEC. Thanks, Izzy, and uh, welcome everyone. Thanks for coming today. My name's Alex Bolch. I'm Director of Research at the Modern Slavery PEC. I'm going to start off with a, a brief introduction to <clears throat> what the PEC does uh, and our key guiding principles to the research that we fund. So we are a centre that's set up to improve the quality of research uh, on modern slavery and to transform the effectiveness of laws and policies to address it. So it's really about improving uh, research and getting that research into the hands of decision makers and making sure that it has an impact. So we're different to normal funders in a sense that we are a policy and evidence centre. We do fund uh, independent impartial research, but we don't stop there. We actually continue to work with teams as they conduct their research. We support in lots of different ways uh, from designing the research itself to um, the policy impact and engagement and communication. So we're about research and policy making, connecting the two, but also building bridges between uh, different parts of uh, the sort of modern slavery sector. So between third sector organisations and academic organisations, between policy makers uh, and researchers. So we're about collaboration, bringing people together uh, and trying to do things a bit differently. Uh, in terms of uh, how we do these things slightly differently, we have our own guiding principles that we establish through uh, a consultation process to try and ask what, what does research need to do uh, better and how should we um, fund our research on what basis? And the three principles here uh, explain that. So first of all, effectiveness. We need to know 
what works and why it works um, and for who it works. Um, so that's just the basic understanding that research should shed light on um, the effectiveness of existing policies and potential policies to address modern slavery. The second principle is equity, which we see in sort of two different ways. First of all, the fact that modern slavery is um, an issue which connects very clearly with inequality, with structural injustices. Um, and secondly, that we need to think about those when we fund teams and, and, and individuals, uh, we need to think about how we can do that equitably and how research teams work with each other uh, equitably. And that also leads on to survivor involvement. How do we involve people fairly with lived experience? How do we go beyond simply asking people with lived experience to tell us about their experiences and actually give opportunities for leadership uh, for those with lived experience uh, and proper and non-tokenistic engagement with those communities most directly affected by modern slavery. So that's a sort of general um, sort of overview of the PEC and why we're a bit different to uh, your average funder. Um, now I'm going to talk about the two calls today. Uh, the first one of these is homelessness. And actually these two um, funding calls fit with another two that we did in a webinar uh, yesterday, which is going to be available also on the website. Um, so this is a sort of portfolio or a cohort, if you like, of different research projects, which all speak to prevention. How can we better prevent uh, modern slavery and how can we address vulnerabilities to modern slavery? So homelessness. Um, on this call, we're looking for new evidence on the linkages between modern slavery and homelessness. And that is in particular because there are some good data sets coming online now on homelessness that could help produce new insights for policymakers. The scope here is on on adults in the UK, uh, but we understand that applicants may wish to narrow that focus. Uh, and there's a bit on that in the objectives later on. So you might want to look at a particular part of the country or a particular uh, group of individuals or a particular cohort. And um, we understand homelessness and being threatened with homelessness um, in the same way that this is defined according to section six of the homelessness code of guidance for local authorities so there are established definitions but we do understand that you know this is not uh, straightforward and there are sort of lots of groups at risk of homelessness um, in terms of the objectives um, there's quite a few so bear with me there's three slides here um, but you'll see that some of these are sort of standard ones that we have on all of our projects uh, and some of them are more specific to this particular piece of research we'd like to fund. So first of all, we want to know why adult survivors of modern slavery may be more at risk of homelessness, but also why adults who are homeless or may become homeless are more at risk of modern slavery. So there's a sort of two, two ends of the telescope uh, to look through there uh, and to understand those risks. Secondly, uh, as I mentioned before, we, we're interested in uh, available data sets and they're listed there and there are links to them there. Um, that might help us understand um, patterns and trends uh, of adult survivors of modern slavery who have experienced or are at risk of homelessness. So we're interested in all sorts of methods that could be applied to those available data sets to uh, draw out insights. Um, objective C is to look at the intersection between homelessness and NRM, uh, so the National Referral Mechanism, uh, as we know that there may be risks when leaving the DNRM or support through the NRM, uh, increased risks of homelessness at that point. And so we're interested in that intersection between those two sort of policy regimes. This could be done through a desk based analysis or from um, the perspective of those people most affected. Uh, and that's the same with, with all of our projects. We're really interested in getting those perspectives to people who are directly affected. So the second slide on uh, objectives, essential objectives, sorry, is um, are the sort of the ones that we have uh, on almost all of our calls, which is um, first of all that we're interested in causality. So if you can determine uh, if there are any particular characteristics or categories that could uh, help us understand different patterns. Uh, so that might be age, gender, nationality, for example. Um, uh, and then secondly, about developing evidence based recommendations. So this is something all of the projects we fund should do. We, we really want you to develop independent, innovative research, but ultimately we want that to generate new evidence and we want that evidence to be useful 
to policymakers. So we need to use that evidence to generate recommendations uh, on how we can improve policies, how we can um, improve collaborations and ultimately safeguard or reduce risks for those at risk of modern slavery and homelessness. So that's something that we would work together with the successful team on because we're we're here to help target those recommendations and provide uh, some some ideas about how the evidence could be used best. Aside from those essential objectives, there are um, some further detail here about how we're interested in, in, in you sort of drilling down in terms of the focus so that there are three here. Um, the first one is about exploring regional differences uh, in homelessness and modern slavery across devolved administrations. The second one is about um, housing support and those with uh, recourse to public funds who fall through the cracks. Uh, and thirdly, it's about exploring barriers to accessing specialised accommodation for people with lived experience or those at risk. So those should be added to the essential objectives. So that's it for the homelessness and modern slavery call. Uh, yeah, remember, if you've got any questions, just um, uh, by all means, put those in the Q&A and uh, we'll take them all together at the end. So the second call is about poverty and the cost of living. Uh, and bearing in mind that all of these calls really are about prevention and about you know, contemporary issues and risks and challenges that we think are most important for us to, to understand. Uh, so poverty and the cost of living obviously is a big topic right now because we understand the increased pressures on people in the UK due to inflation and due to increased cost of living. So we're interested in the relationship between levels of poverty and modern slavery in the UK and how laws and policies could be better designed or redesigned to safeguard against modern slavery, in particular in periods where there is a very high and rising cost of living. The scope here is limited to those, those factors, so poverty and the rising cost of living, uh, but there are two projects. The first project that we would want to fund would be about um, region, community exploitation type or risk factor. And the second project, uh, we're looking more about different sectors of the economy. Uh, and we'll, you'll see a bit more about that in the objectives. Um, but we're we're interested in in any sort of um, innovative or, or or different ways you might want to narrow scope. Bearing in mind these are not very long projects and they're not uh, very large projects either. That you will need to have a fully justified uh, narrowing of the scope so that they're feasible and that they can uh, deliver really high quality evidence. So moving on to the objectives. Again, there's several slides here uh, to cover all the objectives. So project one, as I said, this is about assessing how and in what ways living in poverty in the UK affects risk to modern slavery. So the objectives here are exploring the ways in which poverty is a vulnerability factor, including particularly how food and fuel poverty might link to risks to modern slavery, and then assess which characteristics communities or geographical areas of the UK are more likely to experience this increased risk to modern slavery as a result of changing levels of poverty. And then exploring how poverty interacts with other factors. So uh, again, like the uh, previous call, we're interested in patterns and how those patterns could be explained due to other variables, such as the role of uh, disability, gender, age, nationality, immigration status, and so on. Um, the, the second slide for project one, uh, the, um, the, the the standard objective, which is all projects need to generate recommendations for the UK government. So it's about developing really good evidence. Then that evidence can be used to target particular policy areas where there's could, there could be a, an opportunity to influence and improve those policies. Um, we also uh, think that should include an assessment of whether current policies uh, are working properly, uh, are they effective in safeguarding against modern slavery, uh, and you might want to do uh, some community-based good practice, identify that and, um, and map that and explain what's working well and what's working not so well. Uh, that could include, for example, um, local modern slavery network or, or local network partnerships which exist across the UK. So that's it for project one. Uh, for project two, which if you remember is about um, different sectors of the economy. So we're interested there in how, 
how business operations are affected and how labour standards might be deteriorating in informal or formal economies due to the rising cost of living. So here the essential objectives are to assess the impact of rising energy and raw material costs on businesses and how that might in turn affect working conditions in specific sectors of the UK economy. And we're particularly interested there in areas where modern slavery is known to be a high risk. So for example, in health and social care, agriculture, and the construction sectors where there's existing evidence of um, poor working conditions affecting some parts of the economy. Uh, has that been further exacerbated by uh, poverty and the rising cost of living? Uh, and then explore the ways in which those impacts on business operations and working conditions and how those in, in turn influence risks to modern slavery. So then again, as with the other project, this, this project would need to then use uh, its, the research to generate evidence, which would then in turn allow us to make targeted recommendations for the UK government to improve the effectiveness of laws and policies or safeguard uh, against um, risks of modern slavery where the cost of living is rising. So you might want to include an assessment of e existing policies, um, provide evidence-based recommendations for good practice uh, and do that for both when um, the cost of living is rising and in terms of um, the increased cost of business uh, in a period of high inflation. So that's it from me. I'll then hand back to Izzy for the application process. Thanks very much, Alex. So I'm just going to talk through the application process now and some of the um, more technical aspects. So to start off with, just a quick look at the timeline for this, this research. Applications need to be submitted by the 6th of April at 4 p.m. UK time, and we're unable to accept late applications as call. So please make sure you leave enough time for any institutional approvals that you need to get done. Um, any questions that you need to ask the PEC, please make sure you just leave plenty of time flows ahead of the 6th of April. We'll be making our decisions across the month of April with an aim to send out the um, decisions to teams in late April, early May for projects to start in June. And then throughout the project, there's sort of three main phases of work. So the first one is the setup phase where we'll be getting the contracts and ethics and things like that done. And you'll also be collaborating really closely with the Mon Slavery PEC to refine your research questions, refine the tools and methodology that you'll be using in your work. The next phase is where you're out doing the research and you'll be checking in with the modern slavery PEC throughout that research phase, sharing interim findings, building up plans for policy engagement. And then the final phase of work is finishing up, sort of um, writing up your, your project, writing up your report and research summaries and working closely with different teams at the PEC, including our comms team, policy impact team, partnership team to disseminate your work widely and delivering your final outputs by the end of December. And I have just um, sort of note here that we do have quite a hard stop at the end of December for these projects. So we're really interested in seeing projects that are clear about their feasibility to be able to deliver within that time frame. Um, and that's something that we'll sort of look for in applications and it is in the assessment criteria for this call. So just to go through some advice for putting together a strong bid. These are some things which have come up through previous panels that we've run, sort of um, themes that are often discussed within the panel. So first is using clear and concise language. This is um, really important modern slavery PEC because the audience for our research is really wide ranging. If policymakers, individuals with lived experience, academics, it, it's, there's a really broad range and this is reflected in our panel. So panels will have um, academic representation, representation from individuals who work in the sector in NGOs, individuals with lived experience, and we need to make sure that everyone can understand your application. So please try to avoid using acronyms or where you do make sure they're fully explained and really clear. If you're using technical terminology, make sure this, this is explained really clearly so that the panel can understand what your application means without needing to Google a lot, basically. The next thing that comes up in panels regularly is around justification of choices made in the application. And what we mean by this is, if you're saying we're going to speak to 20 people, 
um, and do interviews with, with 20 individuals. We want to know why you've chosen 20 individuals, why you've chosen that sector, what is the justification for this? And it can be a very practical justification. It can be around the timeframes. As I've mentioned, the timeframes are tight. So we're looking to see projects that have really thought through how they can complete their work within that timeframe. It could be because of existing connections that you have. It could be because you think that that cohort is going to be the most representative cohort to deliver recommendations that will be um, relevant to policymakers in sort of a, a wider sense. Whatever the justification is, is fine, but the panel really looks to see that justification. So we'd always recommend including that in your application. And then finally, is demonstrating collaborations with partners involved. So as we'll come on to, applications to this call need to demonstrate partnership between um, academic researchers and third sector organisations. And we want to see that uh, collaboration really clearly from this application stage onwards. So going on to the eligibility for this call, projects may be led by either a UK higher education institution, so a university, or an approved research organisation that's eligible to receive UKRI funding. And if you're not sure about that, check within your organisation or there's a list on the UKRI website or a charity that's registered in the UK that has a focus on modern slavery. Project teams need to include at least one academic or research organisation and one UK based third sector organisation. And that needs to be very clearly demonstrated in the application. So in that first section where you list um, the all of the researchers and the partners, we, we need to see representation of both of these groups at that stage. And that normally needs to also be reflected in the budget. Teams that don't demonstrate this won't meet our eligibility criteria and they won't go to panel. So it's really important that you include this clearly in your application. You'll see throughout the documentation um, for the call that we talk about principal and co-investigators. So it's going to take a moment to explain explain what we mean by that. A principal investigator is the lead researcher. They have a project management responsibility. They'll be based at the lead research organisation and they'll be the main point of contact with the modern slavery PEC. Co-investigators are people who will be collaborating on the research, might be they're leading on a particular strand of the work, might be that they're helping um, and assisting the, the principal investigator. They could be based at the partner organisations or at different organisations that are taking part in the work. So just if you see that, te uh, that terminology there, when we're using the term investigator, with it's a synonym for researcher. For this call, um, because we appreciate there are six different projects that will be funded across this call. You can be a principal investigator on a maximum of one application, but you can be involved in two applications. So that means that you could either be a principal investigator and a co-investigator, or you could be a co-investigator twice on two different applications. This um, restriction is applying to individuals. It's not applying to organisations. So an organisation can have multiple different applications across this call. It's just you can't have the same individual named as the researcher twice. If you have any questions about that, um, especially depending on sort of your organisational setup, you can always email us at office at modernslaverypec.org with questions around that eligibility. In terms of the funding available, there's a maximum budget of £100,000 for projects under this call at 100% of the full economic cost. You'll see us mentioning full economic cost regularly throughout the call document. And just to explain what that means for those who aren't coming maybe from a um, university background. So full economic cost just means the full amount that needs to be spent on a project. And the reason why it's important and it's used in um, research operations is that higher education institutions and approved research organisations receive their money at 80% of the full economic cost. So for every pound spent, the modern slavery pet will reimburse them 80 pence. Um, UK based third sector organisations will always receive their funding from us at 100% full economic cost. So for every pound you spend, we'll reimburse you a pound. That's completely standard for universities um, and research organisations to receive their funding at 80%. So don't worry about this. It's um, If you go to your research office, if you're based at a university, that's how they're used to putting budgets together. So don't worry about it, but we just want to sort of um, set that out for applicants so you can understand why in our budget spreadsheet, there's a formula that makes things 
80% if you're based at a university. We, as I mentioned earlier, we're expecting to fund six projects for this work, and we'll be doing this with a portfolio consideration. So we'll be looking across these two projects and also the two that we held the webinar on yesterday that Alex mentioned. Um, we'll be looking across all of those projects and we'll be funding as a portfolio, and we hope to bring these projects together as a portfolio throughout their work. For these projects, in terms of um, funding, UK-based third sector organisations can receive up to 50% of the project's budget and international organisations aren't eligible as partners on this call. I'm just going to show some budget examples to sort of fully explain um, what we mean about that budget breakdown. So you can see here we have the first example. Apologies if it's a bit small. You can also download this on the call webpage. Um, so on the first example, we have a university that's receiving 55% of the total project cost. And then we have two charity partners who are splitting the other 45% of funding. That's all fine. It's within the £100,000 envelope at its full economic cost. Um, and the charity partners aren't exceeding that 50% limit. In the second scenario, we've got two universities involved and they're receiving 50% of the funding and then two charity partners involved who again receive 50% of the funding. We're under that £100,000 budget and um, the charity partners aren't exceeding the 50% limit. So that's also within our sort of funding envelope. And it's just to um, flag, obviously these are very high level figures, but in your budget Applicate in the application, we would expect to see things broken down into the actual amounts being spent. So that brings us to the end of our presentation for today. Just a reminder.